morning, fellow Plexers, and to Dennis specifically. Dennis, I want to show you both Music Brains Picard and MKV Tool Nix. Those are the two most frequently useful programs for maintaining a Plex media server with both video files and music files. So I have one, mus one album and one movie, and this funky file name came from my own custom expression in FileBot. So it, it reaches out to the movie database, grabs the proper movie name and year. I've also set it to insert the um, database number in a Plex compliant way. And then I've kind of modified what Plex is doing in a TV show library where it tells you to put anything you want ignored into brackets. Normally extra information just needs to be separated by a space dash space, but I've taken the extra step to put that info into brackets by assuming that Plex will eventually make the same official change in the movie naming document as they've done in the TV show document. But if these brackets weren't here, that space dash space is enough of a separator. Plex doesn't use that stuff for matching. So anyway, let's move on to the audio. So Plex needs to have key embedded metadata match up in order to bring an album in either as a match to an online source or as a unmatched album. So if I drag this file or this collection into Music Brains Picard, I've already used this program to apply the best metadata possible, which is why it showed up in the right column, in the right pane. If I expand it, you'll see the songs, but if I just click on the master album, you'll see that the artist is the same for every song, the album name's the same, and the year is the same, along with the cover art. If these collection of songs didn't have any met metadata embedded, but only had those four key points, if only had those four key points, whether there's a match in the Plex database or not, Plex will correctly scan this in under Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with the album name of Greatest Hits, released in 1994, and display this cover art. So metadata is king in a Plex music library. Um, and you'll find many examples of an album not making a online match in Plex, and you can see the difference. Um, the synopsis for an artist or an album will be missing if Plex just used that embedded metadata, but just, just casually looking at your Plex music library, you won't see much of a difference between the two. But if you've got a synopsis for the, for the album, if you've got a description for the artist, you know that it's matched with an online source. So there's lots of tags in a music file. Um, and you don't need many of them set correctly to have Plex match things up properly. So basically, if you drag an album in that's not matched, you'll see all the songs on this side, you hit cluster, you highlight the cluster, and you click um, scan, and hopefully you'll match up with an album. Sometimes you'll get 90% of the songs matched to the correct album, and the other songs will match to other ones. Well, if that other album's here, you can just expand it, drag the song in here, or even move it around if you wanted to. See how I just moved that around? The green is the correct match, the yellow is not. If I move it back, it's matched. If I dragged it out, you'll see it here. And if I chose scan, it just finds it and links it up again. So this really isn't a Music Brains Picard tutorial, so we'll stop with that. So now we'll move on to MKV Toolnix. I'll open it with MKV Toolnix. And you can see all the components of this um, container file. We have the video file, which if, if created properly, there should not be a track name for the video file. You do want a track name for um, the audio file though, and this one happens to be labeled stereo. 
It could be labeled English stereo, it could be labeled anything. But what's more important than not is to have the language flagged. You can get rid of this label, it doesn't really matter, as long as this is flagged for Plex. Plex isn't going to display the label, it's going to display the language based on this language code. So now I have a second audio track. I would have to preview the video to figure out which is which, but one's probably a commentary track. So I can uncheck that. Now I've got the French and the Spanish um, audio tracks. I can uncheck those if I don't want them in the um, file. And now we come to the V sub subtitles. Of course I have an English one and if I've already previewed the movie I would know whether it might be a hearing impaired or not. And if this was incorrectly flagged I could change this line to yes. Or if it was a four subtitle, maybe you had three English ones and they weren't labeled, you could you could assign one the default, one the um, hearing impaired, and one the forced. But in this case, we're going to uncheck the Spanish, French, and, and French, um, both Spanish subtitles and the French subtitle, leaving just the English subtitle, the English audio track, and the the um, video part of the container. And right down here we'll hit start multiplexing and as you see the progress is very quick. This is this is akin to unzipping and rezipping a container file, an archive file. So now if I kill that program you'll see I've got a second version. And if I open the first version up and pause mm -hmm. it, it opened off screen, you'll see that I have all four subtitles and I have all four language tracks. Now if I open up the one I adjusted and pause it so we don't have any copyright strikes, you'll see we're down to just the single subtitle track and the single audio track. So that in a nutshell is MKV Toolmix and if I open this one back up you'll see we have just what we wanted. And let me do this one more time. Let me remove the subtitle from this. Say, say I have a SDH version of a subtitle which, which works better on a server than a um, VOSUB subtitle. So maybe I want to remove that. So now we have the new one, and if I open that and stop it, now there's no subtitle. So let me get rid of this, get rid of the original, and I'll treat you to FileBot 2. I'm going to open these files in FileBot, and let me just, well let me do this first. You get rid of the music album. We'll open it file bot and I'll use this renaming scheme. So it's going to rename each of these differently because my my um, expression for file bot looks to see if there's an embedded subtitle file and I've got it set up to put ENG sub in brackets. The, the, this one, the last file we adjusted, doesn't have the embedded subtitles, so if I choose Rename and come back in, I've got the one folder properly and the two different versions of this movie now, one with embedded subtitles and one without. So, MKV Toolnix, um, Music Brains Picard, and FileBot are probably the three best programs anyone could use for maintenance of a Plex server. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.